Okay, why are you still here? Hey, you should make a simulator video. They're really cool. Like, simulators are actually goaded. They are the most awesome thing I have ever played in my life. Oh, well, hey, he's gone now. How convenient. Simulator games. Whether you love them or hate them, they exist and they're here to stay, probably, maybe. I've dabbled in simulators in the past and they were not good. Most of it was just click a button multiple times or just have an auto clicker on and wait as the premium payouts for the developer roll in. They were mostly harmless though. They weren't really like actively copy pasting the same game over and over to make as much money as possible. Nobody would do that. Of course somebody did that. You read the title of this video. Let's just get on with it. We begin our journey into the depths of Roblox with Lumberjack Simulator. Yeah, remember this game? This is just the same game as Ball Sword! Like, actually, the exact same game! Yep, we're back here again. For the people who didn't watch my hour-long analysis on the hunt, your goal of this game is to keep clicking until you're able to fight the random NPCs. Now, this game has interesting monetization features. Aside from the obvious like the game and join the group pet, we have other things. First of all, there are tons of things that give bonuses in this game. Fruits, which can obviously give click multipliers. Clicks, which you get by clicking, yeah, obviously. Trails, I don't know how you get them. And axes, which you get by defeating the opponents. Of course, the longer players play your game, the more money you get. So obviously, you have a 45 minute pet pack, a 23 minute OP magma egg, which it claims, an OP space egg for 18 minutes, and finally, of course, the daily rewards with bootleg characters. All of which has its progress reset if you leave the game. Why? Because a premium payout! Or spending Robux, but that's obvious. Now, what's in the Robux shop? A weekly limited pet, two limited eggs, a crap ton of game passes, three different versions of VIP where if you own all three you get a secret pet, Three different pet equip passes, which if you own all three, you get a secret pet. Three different luck and swing speed passes, which you get a secret pet. And extremely overpriced limited stock pets, with prices going all the way up to 15,000 Robux! Trails, which increase speed and power, I guess. Instant fruit bonuses. Potions for increasing the amount of stats you get. And obviously the ripoff stat packs. I have played Roblox for seven years and I have never seen this heavy monetization, ever. If you don't have any of these game passes, it'll probably take dozens of hours to complete the game, which either way, premium payouts if you own premium. Why would you even pay for any of this if the game is literally just auto clicker simulator? There are even free auto train and auto fight passes. THERE IS NO GAMEPLAY! Okay, but it's one game. If I check the developer, there aren't going to be more. Okay, so apparently they own like 25 different studios. Alright, I guess! Catching Simulator, okay, so it's like Pokemon, right? Nope, it is the exact same game as before. The pets that you catch are the equivalent of the axes, so why wouldn't these count as pets? Instead, they're just like paws for some reason? Like, why not make them actual pets? This doesn't make sense. Besides the same playtime eggs, we have a $5 a month membership, which immediately gives you access to overpowered stuff, which completely defeats the purpose of the game. There isn't even Robux involved this time. It's just actual money. Everything else monetization-wise is the exact same besides the free like the game pet including notifications too. Overall, this feels a lot more updated than the last one we played, but not in a good way. Flag Battle does look different in terms of its style, however it's still the exact same game that we've already seen before in multiple different scenarios. I mean, there's like less Robux stuff, but they do have a <laughs> Christmas event pass. Yeah, this game's abandoned as hell, and yes, it is a battle pass, except with daily rewards now, ooh. 
Another tactic this game uses is free UGC with all of them out of stock now, amazing. You'd probably have to play the game for hours on end to get them, so again, premium payouts, yay. But besides that, it's, again, the exact same game. Weightlifting Simulator may look better, however, don't be fooled, this is still the exact same game. The eggs do look like a billion times better than the other ones. This one has an actual battle pass instead of just daily rewards. Still very scummy, but I mean, at least they put effort into it. Surprisingly enough, I found a seemingly well put together Easter event. Yeah, the main gameplay for the currency was boring as hell, literally just walking around and collecting stuff. But at least they tried. Hmm, I wonder what to play next. Pillow Fighting Simulator? Pillow Battle? Pillow Battle Simulator? Pillow Fighting? Pillow Fighters? Pillow Battles Simulator? Pillow Battles? Pillow Fighters Simulator? All of the games I mentioned redirect to the main game, the one with players. Now, the main concern I have is that the old games actually have favorites and visits. If you bought the game passes and pets from those old games, do they carry over to the new one? Or does your progress just reset to nothing and all of the money you spent? This entire thing just turned from really scummy to actually illegal. You can't just sell products in a game, close the game down, and then a week later make a new game with the exact same stuff in it with you needing to rebuy everything. At least the other games didn't do that, what if they do start doing that though? This game in particular doesn't really have anything unique to talk about, it's just the exact same thing as that we played before. Let's check back in on Pull a Sword, you know, the other game that they made that got in the hunt for some dang reason. This game has a ton of free UGC, however a lot of it's already out of stock. This game has a unique mechanic, being if you actually complete some of the NPC quests, like, you know, this guy for example, you get a piece of a pet. Not an actual pet, one thirtieth of a pet. In which you could also use those pieces to create better pets. 9,999 of three different pet types for one thing, oh my god. This game also has a gift for playing for 30 minutes. Now, the interesting thing is that there's one pet you can get for a 90% chance, and then there's a 10% chance for a tier 2 gift, in which that has a 10% chance for a tier 3 gift, which has a 1% chance to get the best thing. Meaning, you have a 1 in 10,000 chance to get this one pet for playing for 30 minutes. Or you could put, just pay 900 Robux for 10 rolls. They also have gift packs, where you can just get all of the random stuff that they throw at you in this game. There's also a credit system. 30 minutes equals 1 credit. You can spend these on 500 credit plus items. Okay, I get it if it's like 1 credit per minute, but 30 minutes for 1 credit to get the cheapest item in the shop you need to spend 37 hours straight playing this game. They'll have probably made hundreds of Robux from you off the premium payouts if you do that. At least, like, the dragon looks well model. That's the only good thing I can say. Toilet Battle Simulator is the exact same thing we've seen before, except with Skibbity Toilet. Yay! My favorite thing in the world! The only difference is that you actually need to go to a punching bag to train. But this person wasn't all just copy-paste. One of their first games that I found was a game called Punch a Friend. Yes, it had basically the exact same game as before, except now it's not like timed and instead you just, you know, beat up your friends as NPCs. It didn't nearly have as much monetization as the other games. However, this does come at the cost of having the environments look extremely bland. Plus, they still have that bootleg Luffy pet. Now, I don't want to end this video without talking about their race games. This is their second type of copy-paste games with their own set of UGC and their own set of code. Yeah, they have the exact same monetization tactics with the down to the pets that they have, but still. 
Instead of Auto Click Simulator, it's Hold W Simulator. In the one I'm playing right now, you are a butterfly. Now, what interests me about this is the amount of new monetization stuff they have. They have magic now. Either you pay for specific magic or you pay for magic loot boxes. Oh yeah, and there are also limited skins, because why not? Oh yeah, and also the same pets and stuff that you could buy for a limited time. Their counterparts, Dragon Race and Bee Race, are exactly the same thing. Truly a testament to how far we've come as a society. And that is all of the X-Frozen simulators, yay! So that leaves us with the question, why were any of these made? Either you have to be really, really bored, or you are a literal toddler if you want to play this game. I mean, I can tell that that's this game's target audience. Not to mention that the icons' thumbnails are just filled with toddler meme culture that died months ago. I'm aware that there are tons of other studios like this, however I'm not even going to begin talking about them. The point is, these games were made to exploit kids. All I can hope is that this doesn't become a new trend on Roblox like it did with RNG games. Then again, kids are the demographic of most simulators. Yeah, there are good simulators, but of course, what we looked at was basically the opposite. With that being said, we're done here. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time! Um... Shouldn't something happen right now? Hey, can you make Jato Part 4? I'll think about it.